How's it going guys? I just finished cutting the last short I made and I've decided to do another BTS video. I think this is very helpful for me to do and for other people who are wanting to get a holistic experience of being on set, especially because I'm an actor and as a director and crew, a one man show basically. And so I'm just kind of gonna go through what I learned from this set, the goods, the bads, the uglies and what have you. So if you enjoy this type of video, stick around and we'll get into it. I wanted to do another piece from a film and adapt it into its own short film again. I really enjoy that process because I know obviously the script is good and something I write myself would take so much longer to get a really decent script with good ideas and concepts in it. What I like about adapting scripts that I've already seen is that the writing is already good and I just need to make small filmmaking changes, dialogue changes here and there so that it can be its own interesting standalone short. Because I'm right now interested in maybe the directing and filmmaking side of things more and i don't want to really get too caught up in the script phase of things so it kind of works out nicely so we decided to choose a scene from inside lewin davis scene where lewin davis goes to meet bud grossman and basically ask him for an opportunity and we thought that would be interesting to make as obviously a standalone short but instead of how it is in the film, we decided that she, I played the Bud Grossman character, we changed the name obviously, and she played the Lewin Davis character. And she comes to meet him in a hotel to sort of do an elevator pitch because she knows someone he knows. He gives her an opportunity to sing for him and see if she want, he wants to sign her. And ultimately, he doesn't sign her. She's left devastated, but she understands that this is part of the industry her industry the music industry and that she must keep going you know he thinks she's good but she just isn't the right look so that was the idea this is the last time i will be using the gh5 because i am now switching to the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k which i'm shooting on now and it was a nice little send off to the gh5 uh with my love affair the gh5 i can't say enough about that camera and if you're a beginner filmmaker there's no better camera to get because it has everything you need in one camera to create cinematic looks and to learn the ropes and for me been the ultimate learning experience because i've come from the add before that and hands down uh, that's the best camera i've i've used this far and obviously more usable than a black magic pocket cinema 4k um, but it was a nice little send off, especially just as I was really understanding and getting used to grading in vlog. And now obviously I'm with the Blackmagic Pocket uh, Cinema 4K and now I'm grading from ProRes, which is slightly different. But it was a nice little send off. Over the time of my filmmaking of the last two years, I've accrued plugs for basically all my equipment. So if I'm inside... I don't have to worry about any batteries. Everything is plugged in all the time, which is a massive time saver, especially on this set, because I had plugs for everything. I was very overly ambitious with this, I will tell you now. Initially, I wanted to do it all in one day with exterior shots at the start, and then the dialogue in the room, in the hotel room, and then finally when she goes back to the car and receives a phone call from the Bud Grossman character but I didn't quite get all of those scenes done uh, it's just the last two scenes where she's in the car and the phone call from the Bud Grossman character so I didn't get that done and in a way it didn't well I tried to get it done actually but I was so tired at that point because we had started at one o'clock and this was 11 at night now as I was doing my side of the phone call I was just too tired. I couldn't actually perform as an actor, but I tried to do it. But it worked out kind of well because in the end, I didn't even use their conversation and I just used footage of her getting into the car and thinking about what just happened and deciding, no, this is part of the industry. This is a bad day, but I'm going to move on. It's not the end of the world. That's just his opinion type thing. That's how it ended up being two days. I'm lucky it was only two days. It doesn't look like a two day shoot, I would think, with no crew. I think it looks like a couple of days shoot. So very ambitious, uh, but the ambitiousness made me achieve quite a lot in a short amount of time, I think. When I arrived at the room, 
because we paid for this hotel and I assumed that uh, the hotel would have fairly good lighting. So I decided not to bring my 120D because I thought I'd have cool lighting in the room, window light. I know that's a dangerous thing, obviously, because the exposure is changing all the time. But I thought I could probably get away with it and just bring a few of my... Uh, I have two young no lights, which are... Uh, I'm using one now, which is sort of uh, hair lighting me. But So that's why I brought those two lights. I thought that would be enough. And mistakenly, the shot on me, I have two windows, one either side of me, one to this side and one to the back of me with a diffuse curtain which look really good but the shadow side of my face was too shadowy obviously i shoot into the shadow side as that's more cinematic and so i had to light that shadow side of my face so that it looked balanced uh, but i didn't have a strong enough light to compensate the light from outside it, it worked in the end and luckily enough i was shooting on vlog so i could correct that in post but that was i'll get on to that one of the big problems in post was getting the right exposure on my face without creating any noise and unfortunately there is a little bit of uh, video noise on my face but I don't think it's too distracting. We started on me first because I was obviously the crew as well and the director well she had me directed uh, the other actress that was working with me but mostly I was going to be crewing it so I decided to do my medium shots and my close-ups before hers so that I had the energy for the performance on my takes and when it was on her takes obviously i could concentrate more on the filmmaking and i think that was the right way to go and i did three medium takes on myself and then two close-ups but i was really happy with it because i felt very comfortable uh, surprisingly comfortable uh, as an actor i just kind of even though i thought oh god i wouldn't know what this it means to be this character uh, because I don't really have any experience in that area. Only the other side of knowing that type of person just from my own industry, but n not experiencing turning people down and what have you. But surprisingly, I was very comfortable and uh, I can see that in my performance, So, which I was quite happy with. I feel like I maybe undershot with the close-ups. Uh, I would have liked to held longer on me while she sang and I was judging her performance while she sang. Uh, you'll see that in the video when you go to watch it. Uh, but ultimately, I was really happy with my takes. And then we flipped the camera around on her. One of her medium takes was really, really good. Uh, the emotion quality, and it was fantastic. And the listening from her was really good. And then her close-ups were really good as well, but just not as good as that medium take. And what I find uh, as an editor now is that I, I just go with the take that has the best emotional quality. You know, Obviously, it would optimally, for the most emotional moments, I'd like to push you into the close-up. But if the medium has has the right listening and the right emotional content and flow and tone in it i'm i'm just going to choose that every time i mean walter murch in his book says you know emotion is king yeah, second to story you know uh, and i find that intuitively naturally that's where i gravitate lean towards in the edit i i mostly worked off that medium take of hers because it was just phenomenal um she should be really proud of that it, really stunning uh, acting from her uh, lots of color. One of the great things I find uh, as a as an actor's director, actor first, and then sort of I mean directing pieces next is that I am and the actors I work with, we're very interested in eliciting as much color from the performance as possible because we're seeing it from an actor's director point of view as opposed to a filmmaker's point of view, and that's where you know I'm making up the ends now in the last two years is learning the filmmaking craft so that it can uh, it can reinforce my acting and now especially with this piece I feel like uh, this is the first time that that now the filmmaking is really complementing my acting uh, for, for a while I, I felt like okay I, I've got a good ability as an actor and a director but the filmmaking really isn't showcasing me well enough but I feel this is the first time the shots are doing that as a beginner filmmaker you just kind of you know put up the camera and hope that looks good and it works in the edit but as you progress through your filmmaking skill set the shots become more and more motivated which is very similar to how you approach it as an actor because you're trying to walk into the scene with an objective and a motivation like where was i before here where am i off to and the same then that kind of conceptual thinking then applies to the filmmaking aspect and so after a while, I'm feeling like the filmmaking is becoming more one with the performance element of, of, of the piece. And I think that's very evident 
in, in this piece. Uh, I think for the first time, one of the shorts that I, I'm quite proud of, uh, a lot of the times I feel like most of the work I do is not to the standard I see I can reach, but this I felt was, was closer to uh, my potential, I feel. I think that's a nice way of putting it. Um, so day one went really smoothly. And day two is when we came back to shoot this, her scene in the car with a phone call. And it was initially both of us, it was hard for us to get back into the mode of the other day and get the right tone or remember the tone we had that day and match it with the second day. But we found the right tone in the end. And I was concerned when I shot, I was like, maybe that isn't the right tone, but uh, the actress I was working with, she had really the right instinct, to be honest. Um, so I'm glad that uh, she trusted her instinct. And in the edit, it seemed right. But I didn't actually use the phone call in the end. I just used the thinking that she had after the phone call, after she hung up for the phone call. And that's what I used because I felt it was too much for for uh, this Bud Grossman character and this uh, Lewin Davis character to have this kind of uh, heartfelt conversation when they didn't really know each other that well, even though he did think she was really good, but not the right fit for the agency he works for. So uh, I, I, I felt like it was too much because they didn't know each other enough. And so it was enough of a send off just to get her thinking through and and telling herself, right, this is a bad day, but uh, let's move on. This is just part of how this industry works. It's not me, you know, type of thing, which was a nice send off and left on a nice tone. Uh, w but uh, at the same time, uh, I think the biggest flaw with this adapted scene is that I could have said more like with with what I was trying to do here, what I was trying to tell. As a dialogue, as a performance piece, as a listening piece from actors, uh, I think it's interesting, but that's where I think it sort of falls short. So I've recently started using DaVinci Resolve as the color grading software is obviously much better than the Loom Tree panels in Premiere. And so uh, I did a round trip, which is basically taking grading in, in DaVinci Resolve and then moving it over to Premiere, uh, which is a laborious long process, but the grade speaks for itself. It was a nice showcase of what I can achieve uh, with DaVinci Resolve and gives me, uh, it's very exciting for the future because I can create more tone, more emotion, uh, more style in my shots now that I can use that program. So I'm glad I, I put the time in. And then I moved to Premiere and then I, I cut from Premiere. It took me 20 hours in total to kind of finish completely finish the edit. Uh, it might not seem that way, but to get the right tone and the emotional beats just right, it required that amount of time. Um, but but I, every time I finish an edit, I feel like there's a point, oh, you always get this sense of this feeling like uh, diminishing returns now and then I call it a day. Maybe I'm wrong in that instinct, but after about 20 hours, I thought, yeah, okay, this is this is this is as close as it's gonna get. So there was no major flaws in the post production, no major sound issues. I mean, that's the biggest worry, biggest concern, or the biggest fuck up that I, can happen. I think as as a no man crew, is that the sound is gonna be fucked in some way, um, because that's just not at the forefront of my mind or uh, consideration while I'm doing it. Like, why would it be? Because uh, I have too many other things to be concerned with and. Um, so, so there was no major sound issues at all, uh, which I was delighted with, apart from the second day when we shot the scene in the car where she decides to continue on with her music career, bad day and all that. There was Mike Russell as she got into the car and then she made the phone call. And that was partially my fault, but also uh, just she was moving a lot. Uh, and the kind of jacket she had, I couldn't find a great position for the lav mic, you know, in the car. Um, that was the only really major post-production problem. When I graded all the clips in DaVinci uh, da Resolve and then moved them over to Premiere, I was really happy with the look. But then when I played them through, I realized there was some flickering on my face because I had to bring up the exposure on my face, obviously due to the, the window behind me and the window beside me problem. And I was just looking at the stills. I never played them all through in DaVinci Resolve and I saw that it flickered. So I had to do another round trip with just those clips of me regrading so that bringing up the exposure on my face without 
there are any sort of noise flickering. Um, there's a tad bit of noise in the shot still, but it's not distractingly so, and they still look decent. But her shot, I feel, is really beautiful on her, which I think is most important that whoever I'm working with, well, not the nicer shot, but has something to sort of take away from it because, you know, that leaves me with a good feeling. Like, I, I, I'd rather it was me with the less attractive looking shots than her, for example. So in conclusion, I think this was a really nice send off to the GH5, uh, a camera that has treated me and served me really well. This is the two year mark of my filmmaking journey and a point where I feel like I now have a grasp of this medium that it's serving me now as opposed to I'm using my performance ability or you know my directing ability to serve what I'm filming. I feel like it's catching up with my performance ability and I feel that's a really exciting time because the sky is the limit in terms of what I can shoot and make myself and you know not be waiting for the phone call and getting cinematic qualities with uh, no crew and no production. It's nice to know that I can just get up one day and decide I want to uh, make a, a short film or a one man piece, whatever. Uh, and I know that that my filmmaking ability will serve that well, because mainly the shots I'm choosing now and the shots I'm discovering in the moment when I'm on set and the pre-production, all the shots are much more motivated than they've ever been there's a reason for it and even if you're not a filmmaker and you 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 can't see why the shot is motivated for example you can feel it subconsciously we can all feel it subconsciously it's like you know sometimes i walk past the tv in my house and i can just tell from a few frames of whatever the lads are watching that there's nothing really interesting conceptually emotionally going on just from the way it's shot you know so that's it uh, i hope you enjoyed this video uh, you learned something from some of my observations about this shoot. I hope you check out the video and hope you enjoy it and see um, some of my uh, thinking towards why I made the decisions I did. And if you want to get in touch with me, just drop a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers for watching, guys.